But one of my favorite moments in teaching was a library symposium that I got to go to. And one of the guests at that uh, symposium for teachers and teacher librarians was a young teacher himself by the name of Robert Munch. But the part that was the most meaningful to me was a story he told that hadn't yet been made into a book. And when he told that story, I knew that he had something that we would all relate to. And when he told that story, he sang this little song, and it went like this. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. But in recent years, that's, that story has come to mean something different to me. And when I think of that story now, I think of my dad, my dad who has Alzheimer's. And in my head, the story's a little bit different. And the song goes like this. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as you're living, my daddy, you'll be. My dad, in my mind, will always be a storyteller. Though my earliest memories of my dad are around the stories that he told me. When I moved home with my husband to New Brunswick, um, we went on trips together. And it was during one of those trips that I began to see that there were some things changing for my father. Not more than a year later, we were traveling in the motorhome to Michigan for my um, nephew's wedding. And my father was just a different person on this trip. Usually he would sit up front with my, with my husband and he'd read the map and they'd comment on the changing scenery and the next towns that would be coming up. But not this time. This time he, he would sit very tensely and he would, he would be kind of his shoulders would be up and, and he would be tense and he'd be looking out the window at the changing land, landscape and he'd say, he'd say to Brian, so where, where are we now? When are we going to be going home? Where are we going? And, and those questions would come every day and sometimes several times a day. And, and we knew, we knew by the end of that trip, there was something that was not the same about my father. So my mother started the process of trying to talk to the doctors about changes that my father was experiencing. And so they would go through this, this series of questions if any of you have had experience with the mini mental assessment that the, the, the doctors will do to help see how your, how your memory or lack thereof is, is progressing. Um, he did fine on those. He did just fine. So the doctor would say, oh, Annette, it's just, it's just normal aging. And then they would go home and daddy would forget something significant in the home. And, and it, was, it was clear that, that there was something she was seeing that was different. They went back several times and then one day mom went in by herself and she just burst into tears and she said, I need you to understand there is something about Bob that's different. This is just not my husband. And, and it took my mother breaking down and sobbing uncontrollably before the doctor really got it that there was something going on that she was not able to measure in the doctor's office yet.
And I hear that time and time again. It's not the doctor that's going to figure it out first. And I think it's so important for people to, un to, to understand that and to trust their instincts. And so at that point, the doctor scheduled uh, my, my mother for contact with a geriatrician. And, and that process, even back then, took, took several months before she was able to get my father in to see the doctor for the first time. And I would say it was a year again um, before we got an official diagnosis that my dad had dementia and continues to this day with an Alzheimer's-like dementia. In our war, if you will, a very loving war, I might say, between dependence and independence, I began to become very concerned about the potential for my dad to get lost. He was, he's always been not so much a walker as a stroller. He loved working out in his garden. As we began to understand the depth of his memory loss, I would say to my mom, Mom, was daddy outside alone today? Oh yes, he was just, you know, he was just outside doing a little bit of weeding. And did he stay in the yard, mom? Well, you know, you know, he went down to the end of the street the way he does. And I'm going, but mom, he forgets. And one of these days, he's going to go down there and he's not going to know how to get back. So the months went on. And then one day in early August, I got a frantic phone call from my mother. And I picked up the phone and, she, and her first words were to me, honey, We've lost Daddy. A good Samaritan located him in, in Magnetic Hill at the gift store. Now that's something like 11 kilometers away from home. And he had walked, and, and he's 84 years old at this point. 84, no, older than that, 86 years old. And he ended up in, uh, at Magnetic Hill, 11 kilometers away. We were very, very fortunate. I, I, to this day, cannot believe that my father didn't fall. He didn't step out into traffic. He did not get hurt in any way. And it was at a time in the year when the weather was mild enough so that there was no, no danger to him from the weather. It, it's just extraordinary to me to this day that he ended up being okay. I came across a passage that made a great deal of sense to me and really resonated with me and I, I'd like to share that with you. In the movie A Beautiful Mind, Alicia Nash tells how she copes with her husband's schizophrenia. I look at him and I force myself to see the man that I married. And he becomes that man. He's transformed into someone that I love. And I am transformed into someone that loves him. In other words, she looks at him with the eyes of grace. We do that intuitively with people we love, such as a parent with Alzheimer's disease. We see behind the ravaged person that they are now to the person that they once were. I've watched my mother do that over and over again. She gets tired, she gets impatient, she gets sad, but she looks at my father with eyes of love that takes my breath away. There's a place for all of us to love the person who has Alzheimer's with the eyes of love and the spirit of grace.